for me. Good afternoon. Oh, good morning, Steph. <laughs> good morning, family. Again, thank you for your prayers and for the, we appreciate the church's financial and spiritual support for allowing us to go on conferences like, like these that we went to that we were able to be encouraged just like how the disciples were encouraged when they gathered together and, and, and the Holy Spirit was among them so that they could scatter after that and then coming together again being encouraged and then scattering and going their ways and, and just this um, this rhythm of, of being encouraged and going out and doing the Lord's work, I think is really important, especially for, for ministers, for people who are leaders in the church to come together with other churches and realize we're, we're not the only church and we're not doing this work on our own and that we're all struggling in, in some shape or form, but that the Holy Spirit is working in all churches worldwide. What I can say right now is that I, I would not be standing here before you were it not for leaders in my life, my parents, my former senior pastor giving me permission. My parents, I guess, well, God through my parents gave me permission to be in this world. <laughs> That I didn't, I didn't text them, I didn't ask them if I could be conceived or anything like that um, 27, over 27 years ago. But my parents gave me permission to live my life, especially as a young adult. They gave me permission to walk, to fall, to scrape my knees. I remember scraping my knees many times because I was one of those little girls outside just running over the gravel, and then they knew I was going to trip and fall, but they still let me run out there and scrape my knees so that every time I got bloody on, on, on my knees, my mom would always be there to, to go there and put some antibiotics, even though it was extremely painful. <laughs> but the people in my life gave me permission, and one of those people in particular was, and some of you may, may, may know him, uh, my former senior pastor in the San Francisco Bay Area, Jim Roberts, or JR. And, and JR, he, I, I knew him since I was five years old. I, w I was one of those little kids, uh, you know how the, mo the mothers would lay down a, a, a blanket and the kids can sleep there. I was one of those kids sleeping in the aisles um, when, my, when my parents wouldn't let me go with the kids or go with my cousins. I just want to play with my cousins during the sermon, right? And, and my mom said, no, just, just stay here and listen to the sermon. One time I was five years old, my dad even told me to take notes <laughs> as J.R. was speaking. And, and I was saying, Dad, he's talking too fast. I can't write every single word that he's saying. But he was the pastor that I would fall asleep to the sound of his voice. I would fall asleep to the, to the sound of, of the word. And I was just one of those, those children on the blankets. And when I look at these beautiful children here, I, I, you can't think of your, you, you can't help but think of yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And how these, these children in the back that we see here, they're us. And they are leaders in the making. Yeah. And I was one, even though I was one of those little girls falling, scraping my knees, making a fool of myself, falling asleep in the aisles, God looked at me and saw me and said, that's a leader. She's, she's going to preach one day, whether she likes it or not, <laughs> whether or not she feels prepared. She's going to preach, and she's going to do my wonder. And that is what hero makers do. My, I remember the first time I, I gave a, a, a sermon. It was supposed to be a split sermon. It was on Father's Day. And so I was going to share something about God being our Father. And I didn't know it was a split sermon. It was only 20 minutes. I ended up talking for almost 40 minutes. I guess I got carried away. Um, but my pastor didn't say, you're going too long. You need to stop. It's my turn. My pastor didn't say that. He, he didn't get angry at me saying, you're, you're, you're overtime. He wasn't looking at his watch. Yeah. 
He allowed me to, to do what the Lord was already doing in me. He gave me permission to preach. And, and, and that, from, that, from then on, even though it, was, it, it terrified me, I, I, I myself am, am more, am more tendency to be more introverted, and so I was terrified to get up there. I only wanted to sing up there when I was with my mom or with my sister. But being up there, I knew that I wasn't alone standing up there in front of my, my family that God was with me and, and, and gave, God gave, a, gave me permission to speak more and more and more. And so the theme for this year's conference was Hero Maker and, 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 and they define it as a hero maker, as a ship, as, as Pastor Bremi was saying. A ship from being the hero to making others the hero in God's unfolding Story. And to me, and I'll say that again, a, a hero maker, they define it as a shift from being the hero, me being the hero, to making others the hero in God's unfolding story. And that's difficult for selfish, conceited human beings. I myself, whenever I, I grew up watching uh, Lord of the Rings, and I, I, I always saw myself as being Frodo, the, the hero, um, uh, the one who's the chosen one to take the, 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 the one ring and, and destroy all evil forever. I wanted, I always, every time I see a movie, I always see my, myself as the hero. I don't want to be the, the, the sidekick or the, the assistant or whatever. I, I want to be the hero. But if I'm doing the Lord's work, and I'm having it all about me, I'm the senior pastor, I get to call all the shots, I get to speak all the time, none of the kids, I'm the worship leader at the same time. <laughs> Am I really doing the Lord's work if I'm making it all about me? And I'm not making it about Jesus. So, one of, so there, there were five essential practices of being a hero maker, which was, which was briefly covered. Multiplication thinking, permission giving, disciple multiplying, gift activating, and kingdom building. And I would like to focus on, on the second aspect of permission giving. And, and three questions that were addressed to us ministers was, who are we giving permission to? And it's not, it's not just pastors, but it's, it's all of us. It's all of us. Who are we giving permission to in our lives? Are we giving permission for our, our, for our kids, for our, our worship team to make mistakes and pick, them, pick themselves back up again? And the second question was, who can I have an ICU conversation with? Like, like Chanel, I see in you this, this leadership trait that you can serve the Lord through dancing, through through just your presence, through your service, with just working the computer, and even and even more than that, I see I see in you. I, I I'm also a worship leader at, at Grace Life, and being a leader, I've, I've, I'm learning that if I'm going to be the worship leader, I better not be at the center of the stage of the week. And so what I'm, I'm learning to, every time we have rehearsal, I want to have Caitlin, she's 13, 14, she, and, and granted her voice is still developing, and I, I felt uncomfortable to let that go. I was, I, I was thinking, I, I, I probably sing better than her, and, and I, I, want, I want to be at the center of the stage, but I, there was a sense of humility that God convicted me. I have to let this go and not hold on to it so tightly, but let her grow. And so I, I, gave, I gave Caitlin permission, and now she's singing so much better, and she's leading, and I'm having her choose scriptures. I want the Lord to speak to Caitlin the way that he's spoken to me, the way that people have given permission to me, for me to grow. So who are, who are we giving permission to? Who can we have an, an ICU conversation with? And the third question was, who are we praying for at this time? And one of the points that was made during the session of permission giving, especially as, as leaders um, in, in the church, 
was that we should not make our ministry about us. Our ministry is not our own. God has given this ministry to us, and so the ministry is about others, not us. And we see that beautifully in the way God started to make his first disciples, um, God in Jesus. Um, Matthew 4, starting in verse 18, Matthew 4, verses 18 to 19, and I'm, I'm reading from the New Living Translation. One day, as Jesus was walking along the shore beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, fishing with a net, for they were commercial fishermen. So they were just doing, this is, this, they were making a living. This is what they, they loved to do. This was their passion. This was also their job. I could put that on the table. But Jesus, this, this rabbi, this, this leader in the community that they knew of, Jesus himself called out to them. He saw them. He saw their potential. And Jesus gave them permission. You know, God could have spread the gospel in this world so many different ways, but he chose to give us permission to participate with him. He wants us to walk alongside him. Why? I don't, I, I don't have all the answers. But this is a God who's so giving and so humble that he gives us permission to spread the gospel, to spread his word, his love, his peace in this dark world with him. And so Jesus calls out to Andrew and Peter and says, Come, come, follow me, be my disciples, learn from me, and I will show you how to fish for men. I will show you how to fish for men. For people, I, I will show you how to use the passion that you already have in your work, and I will use that to bless the nations. And in verse 20, they left their nets, they left the very thing that gave them purpose, and they found purpose in God, they found purpose in Jesus. They left their nets immediately at once and went with Jesus. How has Jesus called you? How has Jesus given you permission to, to walk with him? Jesus was a great leader, and he is still a great leader, working in and through us every single day. And uh, I'll finish with just a few more main points. The greatest leaders use their power to empower other people. Yes, God gives us amazing gifts, amazing power, but it is multiplied exponentially even more when we use the power that God has given us to empower other people. And I, I personally, I, I was, we, when we were listening to the speaker talk, we, we were given an opportunity to write down or take a note of some of the names in our lives that, of people who are own hero makers. And Jim Roberts was one of them, my own parents. And I, I just want to thank, personally thank Pastor Bernie and Bernie Dizon for being Anthony's and my hero maker. Because if it, and if it wasn't for Bernie, or God working through Bernie, and Bernie surrendering to the will of God in his life, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the confidence and in, in, in the competence that I currently have today. And I, I just want to personally thank Bernie for, for being the hero maker that God has called you to be. Because the world measures success by how much we earn and how many people serve us, right? That's how the, the world measures success. But God measures success by how much we give. How much we give and how many people we serve. The church, we, we are not, we are all as broken as everyone else in this world. We are not God's gift to the world, but Jesus is. And when we surrender to God's will, we, we give God, he, he not only gives us permission to live as his salt and light in the world, but we also, as a response, should give permission to God to, to use us to, we, we, we are God's vessels, right? And so, our, as ministers, as leaders in the church, and just everyday people, who are hurting, our prayer should be, should go from, 
our prayer should go from God bless my gifts to bless the church or bless others. So we're not saying that anymore. Don't just bless my gifts, God, but bless the gifts of the leaders that you've given to us. These leaders, that, these young leaders that are sitting in the back here, our, our children, our, our grandchildren, and even, even the unborn. So what if you're 25, if you're 20, if you're 18, if you're five years old, you are a leader in the making. God has chosen you. So our prayer goes from God bless my gifts to bless the gifts of others. God gives us permission to be his light in this world. Amen. Amen. Amen.